The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. Today is Tuesday, November 29th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me. I want to begin with Elon Musk, the purchase of Twitter, and a fascinating article by David Troy. He is affiliated with Byline Times. Now, this is the first time I've read this particular publication, so I don't know a lot about them, but I do like this article because it takes the conversation about why Elon Musk purchased Twitter beyond the fatuousness and the silliness that Elon Musk is engaging in. Now, we can clearly see one of the things that he's using Twitter for is to amplify the voices of fascists. He replies constantly to a particular subset of the far right across the globe, but particularly in the United States as a means of amplifying them and growing their audiences. And we have seen that happen nonstop, particularly over this past weekend. We've also seen that he's engaged in reckless behavior as a CEO, leading to quite a few companies. I believe 50 of their top 100 advertisers have pulled their advertising dollars, including Apple. Apple came under attack by Elon Musk and all of his sycophants yesterday um, because now uh, they are also considering Apple is considering removing the app from the app store. Now, that's a little bit different than just pulling your ad revenue. Right. The ad revenue from Apple is going to hurt Elon Musk and Twitter, but pulling it from the app store. That now means that everyone who has Twitter on their iPhones, they will not be able to use the app. You would have to log into your browser (laughs) Safari or whatever you have downloaded on your phone and use that. These are two different things. The threat of pulling Twitter from the app store presents a unique problem, even for what we're getting ready to discuss. I believe that there is a long-term plan. I have believed this for some time, but I haven't been able to put it quite in words, which is why I want to give credit to David Troy uh, and read portions of his article because he's outlined exactly what's going on here. To give you a context that you could think about this through, think about the metaverse, think about post-democracy or post What uh, in this article they describe, uh, Putin describes it as noocracy. Think about Ready Player One, the movie where um, most of the world lives in and works inside of one online community. Now, this is the this is the grand prize. This is what all of the tech companies now, Facebook included, they're all vying for who is going to be that next player on the international stage that can provide an online community that is self-sustaining and that gives them the ability to supersede that of governments and nation states. Now, while many of us are focusing on the immediate impact of Elon Musk and his behavior on Twitter, which is becoming a threat to the lives of marginalized communities, that is the clear and present danger. The long-term threat I believe is perfectly outlined in this article and I want to read a few passages of it. Again, this is from bylinetimes.com written by David Troy. The title of it is Musk Twitter buy makes no sense unless it's a part of something bigger. Ever since Elon Musk, CEO of Tesla and SpaceX plunged the world into an endless stream of speculation and condemnation around his purchase of Twitter, the biggest unanswered question has been why for many, his ultimate goal seems to be a mystery As someone who has followed the company and its role in information warfare closely, I believe we need to use a different set of lenses to evaluate what's happening. Again, we're reading from Byline Times. The author is David Troy. He goes on to say this, looking closer at the biggest investors, all of them have an interest in challenging the U.S. dollar. Musk and Dorsey are major Bitcoin fanatics and believe it's future of money. It is the future of money, rather. Saudi Arabia and Qatar have expressed interest in displacing the dollar as the world's reserve currency. It is a peculiar characteristic of the investor list that all of them are interested in displacing the dollar. Of course, this strategy is also favored by Vladimir Putin, 
His disastrous war in Ukraine is about more than territorial gains. It's also a challenge to the West and what Putin perceives as an unreasonable Western hegemony. He intends to organize the BRIC countries, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, and others, into a unified economic bloc rooted in asset-backed currencies such as metals, backed crypto tokens, etc. Now, instead of looking at Musk as a businessman who's trying to make money in the old system of fiat currency, advertising, and revenues, perhaps he's actually an ideologue looking to drag the whole world through a transition into a new economy. Well, then his actions begin to make more sense. A new financial regime. And again, I'm reading from Byline Times. I'm going to make sure that I provide you the link in the description of this episode. And it is written by David Troy. And I want to read this. I normally don't do this, but I'm reading it because I think it gives the most comprehensive look at how we should look at this purchase of Twitter. It goes beyond simply the push for fascism, which is critical, and it is an imminent threat. But this is also an inflection point in, well, in the world order, to be quite frank with you. David Troy continues and says this, a new financial regime. If Musk Twitter purchase price seemed inflated based on legacy metrics, Askin said, what is it worth to him, Putin, and his investors to shift the world into a new financial regime? It's obviously infinitely valuable. This is why I had high confidence that the deal would happen. If this was the goal, then any price is worth the cost. Musk friends, specifically Peter Thiel, David Sachs, and Rod D. Martin, have been trying to replace the dollar since their days at PayPal. Former PayPal COO David Sachs said in 2017, Bitcoin is fulfilling PayPal's original vision to create a new world currency. PayPal co-founder Luke Nosek confirmed in 2019 the initial mission of PayPal was to create a global currency that was independent of interference by corrupt cartels of banks and governments that were debasing their currency. Now, this next section is particularly important. Patriarchy and power. Elon Musk is aligned with Putin in other important ways. Both have been heavily promoting traditionalism, hierarchy and patriarchy. As Putin decries multiple genders and homosexuality, Musk asks advertisers to reject political correctness in favor of free speech. Where democracy tends to flatten societies and equalize opportunities for all, autocracy tends to emphasize hierarchy and wealth. Musk, as the world's richest man, has come to believe that he embodies the peak of such a hierarchy and seems to seek to impose it on others. The bet from both Elon Musk and Vladimir Putin, whether cynically or in good faith, is that Earth is evolving past the era of sovereign nation states and towards some new phase of being rooted in noocracy or rule by the wise, where Putin and Musk are the wise. The recent takeovers of CNN and HBO have prompted similar questions about why they were targeted for purchase and the changes being made there. None of these moves make very much sense if you're looking backwards at the world as we have known it. But if we look forward to the world as it might be, it's possible to glimpse the reasoning. These information channels can actually help usher in a different world. To most of us, that's inconceivable. The world doesn't just change overnight. But to Musk, Putin, and their free market absolutist collaborators, that's exactly what they intend to affect. If we aren't aligned with these potential changes, now is the time to stop laughing at their presumed incompetence and instead deeply understand what they are really up to. Now, before I read the last paragraph or two, I want to pause and just unpack a few of the things that has already been said. We have been saying on this program for some time that there is a global pan-reactionary movement that seeks to enshrine in perpetuity, and by in perpetuity, I mean they want to make sure that there is no possible challenge to the patriarchal, hierarchical worldview that they are seeking to transition us to. Let's be clear about this. This is not to say that the old world that we're currently, that is currently dying, this is not to say that it is admirable, but we can certainly say that the world that Elon Musk and Vladimir Putin seek to usher in, it is one that is going to be detrimental to everyone who, number one, does not already have power. Number two, 
does not already have wealth. Number three is not simply satisfied by being a man in a patriarchal system, even if you are a poor white man. There's an entire cabal of individuals who will never be a billionaire, never be a millionaire, and in fact are quite downright desperate in terms of their financial material situation. But they are so satisfied with seeing the likes of white men, white so-called Christian men in power that they are OK with being at the very bottom of every economic strata. James Baldwin described it like this in one particular debate. He said, so long as that white person, he had more money than the white woman at the Western Union line. But that white woman still had the fact that she was white and she felt that she was better than him simply because she was white. And so this new power system is only going to financially benefit those that are already powerful, those who are already rich, and it is going to be wielded by white men. It is the white male Christian power structure that we talk about all the time that Bill O'Reilly identified on Fox News several years ago. So let's be sure. A lot of people have complaints about what we are living through right now. I have plenty of them. There are enough things that need to be fixed about our current system that, yes, there should be a revolution. But not every revolution is a good revolution. And this is why I don't support the idea of accelerationism, accelerating the decline of the United States of America in order to in the hopes that your particular ideology will rise from the ashes like the Phoenix. What we see more often than not is that it is extremists, particularly from the orthodox, fundamentalist, religious persuasion that end up coming out on top after these type of transitions. And so while we're living in a system that absolutely needs to change, the question is, do you want it to change and be thrown into the hands irrevocably and permanently into the hands of people like Elon Musk and Vladimir Putin? And finally, David Troy concludes with this. He says, and there's the matter of X, Elon Musk's proposed everything app. It's been floated as a response to WeChat, China's ubiquitous app that's come to dominate both payments and the social sphere. Supposing such an app starts to take on the task of voting around controversial topics, at what point does this start to challenge the legitimacy of elected governments? This is something Musk is likely to explore. This is actually what he's already started doing. The number one problem that we are faced with is the control of these massive social media platforms underneath the control of individual billionaires and the people who support them. Consider for a moment how dependent upon Twitter so many critical functions in our society are. Journalism, activism, research. These are just, these are, these go beyond the simple need for us to communicate with our friends and our family. But these tools have become critical in performing critical tasks. The ability to get information out in times of crisis, in times of revolution, these types of things, they have become critical. But now imagine what Elon Musk is trying to do now. He's trying to turn Twitter into its own type of economy. And in that, he is going to create a system that is not only dependent on for communication, but dependent on for payments, dependent on for people's livelihoods. And it's all controlled by one man who seems not seems who absolutely believes that he is above every single nation state. He believes Elon Musk believes that he is the king of the world. He simply believes that because he's the richest man in the world. And he believes that he has the ability and the right to challenge every major institution. And I'm not so concerned with challenging America or challenging other countries. The problem is, is that he's challenging it, not from a perspective that is going to benefit anyone other than the patriarchal system that currently exists and those that are already wealthy. And it comes at the expense of every single marginalized group in this country. As we can see, that's what we see right in front of us right now. Right. The people that Elon Musk is bringing back to Twitter, 
the people that he's amplifying and he's giving them a high five and sending all of his followers to him. I mean, these people, they're following the their followings are growing uh, by magnitudes of order because Elon Musk is free to bring the entire weight of his fame and fortune and his social media platform to amplify the voices of fascists. So we know without a shadow of doubt that whatever this new world is going to be, if it falls and remains in the hands of people like Elon Musk and Vladimir Putin, then we are going to see a world that is dominated by one or two, maybe three social media apps that have the ability to undermine the validity of democracy and entire nations. That is entirely too much power for one man to have, especially when he has demonstrated that all of this is a game to him, our lives. It's just a game for him to play with, for him to amplify people who want to kill us. Definitely go read this article in Byline Times. Again, I don't know anything else about the publication, but this one article by David Troy, it is an excellent article. And I think it really shifts our attention away from mocking him, uh, mocking Elon Musk because he is a moron. Um, but also thinking about the longer play, the longer play gives him the ability to wield a level of power that has here until this point never been seen. The name of the article is Musk Twitter buy makes no sense unless it's a part of something bigger by David Troy. I want to pivot to COVID-19. I haven't talked about it in a while on this show. Most of the world is pretending as if it's not happening anymore. Some of them have gone as far as to pretend, particularly Republicans, conservatives, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. They're going as far as to pretending it never really happened. The most irritating part about this is the attack that is happening on those of us who still wear masks. Now, it has come out recently that COVID is, well, obviously we've known that it's airborne, but it is transmissible outdoors. And for the better part of the pandemic, many people were saying, if you're outdoors, you're safe, you know, just be careful and socially distance or whatnot, and you'll be fine. No studies have now shown that it is just as possible to catch COVID-19 outdoors. I get the fatigue because we are now in year three of this. <laughs> I, I do get the propensity of people to just throw their hands up and say, well, it is what it is. Let's just keep moving. But to have so many powerful people. From the media to politics, to the richest people in the world, to jobs, organizations, to intentionally create the environment to kill as many people as possible. And to make it taboo to try to protect yourself in the midst of this pandemic. I, I, I have no other choice but to come to the conclusion that this is intentional, that they are trying to kill as many people as they possibly can. We've crossed six million deaths around the globe. We stopped counting here in the United States when we crossed a million. That was back in May. A million people dead from COVID-19 in the United States of America. And we still have the likes of politicians like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who are advocating against, I mean, they are actively attacking people for wearing masks. They've already won the victory on the vaccine. They've already ensured that there's enough misinformation out there to keep as many people as possible from getting vaccinated. In fact, the CDC has th all but thrown up their hands. Like They don't even try. The CDC does not even try to help us at this point because, according to them, they had to set their expectations based on the expectations of the populace. In other words, they could not put out policies that went out beyond that went beyond the expectation of the masses. Well, what do you do when the expectations of the masses has been 100 percent manipulated by the anti-vax community, the likes of Robert Kennedy Jr., who has multiple organizations and those organizations had one purpose to ensure that they sandbagged and undermine the vaccine. What do you do 
when media or- organizations like Fox News, major media organizations like Fox News and politicians undermine the validity of the vaccine. We already know that it is easy to manufacture consent in this country. And we have seen the consent be manufactured around the distrust and complete rejection of the vaccine. It's popular now. The popular thing to do is to be opposed to wearing masks and getting the vaccine in the middle of a pandemic that's killing people by the hundreds a day just in the United States alone. What do you do? I mean, I, I really wonder if we understand that level of collective sociopathy, right? This condition that we're in, this thing is still, COVID-19 is still for the third year in the row, the third leading cause of death, only behind heart attacks and cancer. And yet we've accepted it. And it's almost like there's nothing that we can do, not collectively, because we do not have the collective will, the political will, the societal will to do what needs to be done. And here we are now positioned to allow this pandemic to remain in perpetuity because it is not only the leaders, not only the media, but it's all of the people who have been affected by this manufactured consent. It is the popular thing to refuse the vaccine. And if you're still wearing a mask, You can get attacked by people who think you're being ridiculous. You're being a doomer. You're being, you know, a concern troll. I'm sorry, but people are still dying. So long as people are still dying from this pandemic, wouldn't it make sense that you put on a mask? Let's go to the break. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and get twice the content and unfiltered interviews without any of the commercial and interruptions. And here we go. Very special thank you and welcome to our latest patron, Feline Lexius. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. This show is simply not possible without the support of every individual who takes the time to go to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and become a patron where you get access to twice the content, none of the commercial interruptions, and you get access to our bi-weekly patron party. We just came back off of a patron party and it was absolutely great. I even hung out to midnight, which is rather unusual because I'm an old man. Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. And we'll be back right after this break. Welcome back to the Benjamin Dixon Show. Visit us online at thebenjamindixonshow.com. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I want to touch base on what's happening in Gulfport, Mississippi. I was there for some time last month, um, earlier this month even, with the shooting of Jaheim McMillan. The process is still ongoing. And the family is still seeking justice. The police shooting of Jaheim McMillan that took place in front of the family dollar right there off the main road, pass road in Gulfport, Mississippi. There is a challenge getting justice in this country, even when you have video. But right now, the police, of course, they're withholding the body cam footage and the family dollar has released the footage to the police but they have not released the footage to the family. And as a result of that, um, I've been informed and I've shared it on my Twitter timeline. The family has gone, has called and organizers, quite a few organizers all over the country, organizers all over the country are calling for the boycott of family dollar and dollar tree. Dollar tree is a subsidiary. Now of family dollar, they can get this too. They can get a part of this boycott as well. Because we know without a shadow of a doubt that the clearest footage, I I actually walked into that family dollar store on quite a few occasions in order to see and spot the camera footage from 
family dollar is going to be the clearest footage possible for us to understand precisely what happened with Jaheim McMillan. Now, we've shared videos across our timeline, multiple activists. Uh, I've shared it on my timeline of eyewitnesses, witnesses, not just, you know, and, and I hate to make this distinction, but white, there's some white folks, some of the loudest and the most upset people in the city of Gulfport, Mississippi are the white residents who saw this police officer shoot this young man. And the videos that we shared cell phone footage, they all have said the same thing that Jaheem had his hands up and that he had nothing in his hands. Now, the Mississippi Bureau of Investigations has taken over this case. The local police department is pretending as though they can't say anything, don't know anything and don't have any way of helping, assisting. And of course, that's what to be that's what's to be expected. No one has any expectation that a police agency is going to be able to investigate themselves. But we're at the juncture where we know full well that the Mississippi Bureau of Investigation is not going to do their part either. They're not. They're going to draw this out as long as they can. They've seen the footage. They've, they have seen the body cam footage. And according to Family Dollar, they have also seen the Family Dollar footage. Well, Family Dollar can do one better. And until they have released the unedited video to the family of Jaheem McMillan, we are all calling on a nationwide boycott of Family Dollar. Now, maybe you don't go to Family Dollar. That's fine. But maybe you know someone who does. Spread the word. Spread it on social media. I've shared an image on my timeline. This is an image of the organization that is being supported by uh, Jacob Blake Sr., who is the father of Jacob Blake, the young man who was shot multiple times and has been paralyzed. His life has been irrevocably changed because of police violence. He is a part of this boycott, along with organizers from um, all over the country, as far as the West Coast. Um, so many organizations from California and Los Angeles, they are participating in it. And I wanted to give you guys that update, give everyone that update, because it is an ongoing process. This just happened two months ago, and we're moving into this next phase, which is the entrenched warfare. You know, they're in the trenches. I was honored to be able to be there for the first couple of weeks of this, but this is a protracted battle, meaning that it's going to take time because justice never comes easy in America for black people, period. It definitely does not come easy if you don't have video of the atrocity. And even when you do have video, it takes the full movement of the people across this country to get justice, even when people see video. And so it's an ongoing battle. Um, it's a protracted battle. If you or anyone you know shops at uh, Family Dollar, and I know there's a lot of people who shop at Dollar Tree. What, what, what do they call it now? Is it Dollar Tree? You know, I can't even say it like the French version of Dollar Tree. It's popular. Boycott them because if they can continue as business as usual, then they have no reason whatsoever to do their part in helping 15 year old Jaheem McMillan get justice. All right, everybody, that is it for the main show. Go to patreon.com forward slash the BPD show to get access to the second half. I'm going to be talking about Kanye West and his interview last night with Tim Pool, who is himself a right wing reactionary, but he likes to pretend as though he represents uh, the moderate center. He was there with Milo Yiannopoulos, who has long been a part of the far right in this country and the new uh, the newly famous Nick Fuentes, who is an all out Nazi. He has no problem participating in the in leading. He desires to be the leader of this uh, bigoted fascist movement that pretends as though they represent Christ and Christianity, which is the context that I want to discuss it in. Um, Kanye West last night said that he was on a mission from God. I'll play the clip. He didn't stay in the interview long. He left and he ended up looking like the worst person out of those four people. I mean, come on, black man. How is it? That you as a black man allow yourself to be used by white supremacists and because of your anti-Semitism, you come out looking worse than the three fascists that you were sitting with. 
and the fact that Kanye West believes that he's on a mission from God. Well, that part I understand very clearly, Kanye. I too believe that I'm on a mission from God. And my mission, along with all of those who listen and support us, our mission is to tear down the very white nationalists and white supremacy that you're in bed with. Patreon.com forward slash the BPD show if you want access to that. Patrons, stay tuned. Everyone else, I'll see you next time.